What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know how to flip the time intensity curve on its head to become prolific with your time? Well, I got good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you how to do this. It's normally $45, but since you're a loyal listener of the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. You're listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you want to step into your greatness, you've come to the right place. Here is your host, the human strength expert, Kyle Newell. What's up, everybody? It's Kyle once again with another episode of Unlocking Your Inner Strength, the podcast. And this is actually episode number 93. Today, we're going to be going over the fitness pizza pie some different ideas that I've been contemplating and ways to view fitness. But as usual, I like to start with a mindset piece or a mind map piece. So on my personal page at the end of last week, I was talking about how too specific of a goal can cause anxiety. So too specific of a goal could cause general anxiety. General anxiety can be caused by too specific of a goal. The brain, our brain, craves freedom and clarity. It does not like unpredictability. The brain is nothing more than a pattern recognition machine. Prediction, response. Prediction, response. Prediction, response. Back and forth, right? When I set a goal that's too specific and too rigid, it allows for no flexibility. Now, all the years I've been doing mind map coaching and learning mind map and continuing to study the brain... It's important for people to realize that they have a definition of health. Usually it's their a default definition. When we start coaching on this, though, and they come up with their own definition of what happiness is, excuse me, happiness, not health, happiness, freedom is usually involved. So think about a diet. Think on a very basic level. If I put you on an extreme diet, I take away your freedom. This resentment is going to grow. Happiness is going to be lowered. The reason I bring that up is when we set goals, they're just a guide to go go in that direction. That's basically what the goal is telling us. Go that way. Now, the purpose of any goal is to increase your level of happiness. If it does not increase your level of happiness, that's a key sign that we're on the wrong path. The brain doesn't like things that don't make it happy. Everything the brain does, the nervous system does, is for survival. Why would the brain form a habit around something that doesn't enhance survival and make life more enjoyable? Doesn't make sense from an evolutionary perspective. So don't set goals that are too specific. I did that for years. Not the best. Set goals, but realize the process is the goal. For example, with Newell Strength, as we're going through all these growth phases, there's some weeks that we don't hit our target. And what gets me out of that uh, negative mindset is realizing that we're following the process. Am I doing everything I can as a team, doing everything we can to follow the process? If the answer is yes, it's all good. Second thing, great book here, Power Versus Force, highly recommend it. You're going to have to read it a couple of times throughout your life. I find myself referencing this book time and time again as of late, which means I have to go back and read it. It was a book I first read in 2007 when I found out uh, about it from Scott Abel, who was my first coach. Actually, I'll make that the next uh, episode as well. Stuff that Scott Abel taught me. Brilliant guy, brilliant fitness coach. But this whole book is about levels of consciousness and levels of energy. So if you look, uh, if you're watching on live, you have different emotions and different scales of energy. It goes from zero all the way up to a thousand. Now, the level of 200 is the level of courage. Most people operate at the level of 200 or below. Below that, you have fear, you have anxiety, you have grief, you have apathy, guilt, shame, desire, anger, all these things. Most people operate below that level. As you evolve and you become a higher functioning being and your energy level rises up, and you start functioning more out of, let's say, willingness, acceptance, reason, love. Now, love is a level of 500. There's only 4% of the world's population that functions at this level on a consistent basis. It's a rare individual that can function at love. Level of 1,000, by the way, 
is rare air, rarefied air. The only beings that have ever functioned at this level, according to this kinesiology testing, were your likes of Jesus, Buddha, and other religious leaders that were were uh, almost mystical. The reason I bring that up is you just like Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created it. Same thing applies to your emotions and relationships. If you're in a relationship that's fearful and envious and a lot of anger and resentment and lack of forgiveness or unforgiveness, you're never going to get out of that if you continue to bring that energy to that relationship. You have to evolve and bring a, a loving mindset, an acceptance mindset to this relationship rather than resentment and hanging on. So you can't solve any energy issue or emotional vibrational issue with the same level that got you there. It's got to be a next step. Find a mentor, find somebody that functions. And you could feel it when somebody's functioning at a higher level than you, you could tell when they walk into the room. Surround yourself or latch on to those people. Latch on to those people, but don't be needy. All righty. So getting into the fitness pizza pie. This is something I just drew up. It's a, a, a circle divided into six pieces. So it's a fitness pizza pie. Slices are a little bit bigger than if we had the eight regular slices. When people think of fitness, they typically think of exercise. Now, fitness is the the ability to do and perform the things you want to do in life with relative ease or enjoyment. So you want fitness to carry over to your everyday life. Nobody should just be training to get good at training. That is stupid. That's what CrossFit does. Let me get really good at exercising, which is just dumb. There should be something that outside of it, because it's going to enhance your being. It's just a piece of the pie. Exercise. Now, you want to have this carry over to your life outside of your fitness, your exercise routine. So if you're in your 50s, mid 50s, early 60s, you probably want your, your exercise routine to carry over to being able to play with your grandkids, being able to still go on walks and hikes and walk up and down the beach with your spouse, things of that nature. There should always be a carryover effect. What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know how to flip the time intensity curve on its head to become prolific with your time? Well, I got good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you how to do this. It's normally $45, but since you're a loyal listener of the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. Now, the six pieces of the the fitness pizza pie, we have exercise, which I just said, we have food. Those are the two ones that people think about. First, it's usually exercise, then they think of food. Now, the other ones are fun and play. That's one. Learning, sleep, and relaxation. The reason I've been thinking about this so much is when people come to us, we want to help them. We truly want to help them. Now, we'll do something called an in-body measurement, which gives us all their body composition body fat, uh, how much muscle they have, hydration levels, what their weight is. And it gives us something called visceral fat. And sometimes we see visceral fat uh, way above 10. It should be at 10 or below. Now, what visceral fat is, it's the fat that surrounds your organs. The reason your body packs fat down around the organs is literally because of survival. Again, everything your brain does, just like I was talking about with happiness and goal setting, everything your brain does is for survival. So if it perceives this constant stress and threat coming to you, coming at you, doesn't matter if it's psychological, financial, relationship, doesn't matter what it is, lack of sleep, your body will pack fat down around your organs because of hormones that are output because of the stress to protect you from this oncoming threat, even if it's psychological. That's how the brain works. So visceral fat around the organs has a good blood supply, but it's dangerous. Your chance for type 2 diabetes, heart attack, stroke, all greatly increase if it's above a level of 10. Now, most people say, well, I want to get my body fat down. I want to get my weight down. Okay. But I always tell them now, that visceral fat number is the most important number on that entire reading because if, if we get that down, everything else is easy. Now, but that is your stress and your sleep and relaxation. Your stress management, I should say. Relaxation and sleep and fun. So there's three of them right there, right? You get visceral fat down, that carries over. Most people have to start thinking of fitness in terms of this pie. It's what's done outside of your exercise routine is going to have the biggest bang for the buck. Even if you're coming in four days a week and you're there for four hours, 
you know, one hour to clip, that's four hours out of your week. Do the math. Four hours out of your week. What are you doing with the rest of the time? The rest of the time, sleep takes up the biggest part of this. And if you've been listening along lately, you know how I feel about sleep. I used to be a knucklehead with it. You have sleep as the foundation for everything else in this pie. Sleep is by far the biggest foundation. Then on top of that, you have your other pillars. Sleep's going to improve your mood, improve your body composition. It's going to regenerate your brain so you can learn better. It's going to make you uh, more likely to smile, be in a happier mood so you can fun- play and have fun more likely. It's going to help you relax. Nothing will overcome the stress and anxiety and worry better than a good eight-hour night's worth of sleep. So we have exercise. I'll touch on food. Keep it simple. Follow the principles. Don't measure your food. Don't stress it. Eat good food. You don't have to be perfect. It should be something that you can do forever. That's what we have the Rip Dads do. It is a plan that they can literally continue on with for the rest of their life. Very simple principles and they follow it. Fun and play. Fun and play will help the brain grow. So when I go to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, a big part of that is uh, it's play for me. It's getting outside that zone. It's competitive. It's learning all combined. Getting a sweat going. But it's the competition aspect for me is play. Now, fun can also be, are you, what are you doing for laughing? Are you watching something that's going to make you laugh? Are you are you playing with your child or your grandchild? And when they do something, you actually laugh out loud. That is huge. Laughter is huge. All right. It might be getting lost in a uh, in a great novel at night. Um, there's, there's a couple of podcasts I listen to that have nothing to do with fitness or business or any of that stuff that I just find enjoyable that I'll listen to sometimes coming home from the gym. Learning. If your brain isn't learning, it's not growing, which means it's atrophying, it's shrinking. While I'm thinking of that, there's great, great research that is directly linked to sleeping six, six hours or less per night in dementia and Alzheimer's. Start sleeping more. But learning takes place so you learn something new. It's, it's actually draining. The brain's trying to rewire itself. The brain can grow throughout our whole life. That's, that's what's really cool. That's why I do things like the mallet drill, and I'm so big on trying to learn how the brain works because that is this is it. The brain is everything. That's where you access the spirit as well. Even the Dalai Lama has talked about this with the research that I think the University of Wisconsin put out. Uh, cool stuff, but learning. You can't stay neutral. You're, you're either, just like your body, it's either, you're either building up your fitness or it's going the other way. It's not staying neutral, homeostasis. Homeostasis is just a slow state of decay. Your body doesn't want to change. It's called homeostasis. It requires less energy. But you can't stay neutral if you look at the laws of the universe. It's either forward or backwards. So learning is part of your fitness. That could be physical learning. That could be studying. That could be reading. It could be listening to something. It could be going to lectures. It could be watching something like this or listening to a podcast. Sleep, as we talked about, I've done an entire podcast on this. If you don't get that right, forget about all the other stuff. If it came to working out at five in the morning, like I used to do, or sleep, sleep wins every single time. There's no reason that that anything should be put above sleep. And yeah, I could go on and on about that, but sleep's super important. Last one I want to talk about is relaxation. Think of the, the gas pedal and the brakes on our cars. The gas pedal is your sympathetic nervous system, which is freeze. Okay, that's the first state of survival. Flight, where you run away. Or fight, when you have to stay and fight. It does not matter if these are physical realities or not, even if it's just stress in the brain, psychological stress. Now, if you that that's the gas pedal. If you had your, your gas pedal, pedal to the metal nonstop, what's going to happen to that engine? What's going to happen to that car? It's not going to last very long. It's going to burn out. Something's going to break. The brakes are the parasympathetic nervous system. That's relaxation, digestion, sleep, recovery. We need to learn how to relax more as Americans and as human beings. Other nations do it much better than us. But if you look at relaxation, that's meditation. It's actually just sitting outside, maybe smoking a cigar. Just be. Relaxation to me is meditation. It's just stillness. Just enjoy your life. And it can't be all roses all the time and just slow down and do nothing. But the ability to relax and get parasympathetic. Everybody wants to talk about kill it, crush it, dominate it, grind. It's just, it's moronic. It's stupid. Learn how to chill it, not kill it. Learn how to do your belly breathing. 
You can go for a walk. That's an excellent way to get relaxed and still get some movement and a nice blood flow to the brain. But these are all parts of your fitness pie. You have to be in harmony with these, just like in everything in life. You can't have perfect balance. There's a hierarchy with this stuff. Again, sleep goes first. Sleep's going to drive your hunger and your appetite and what foods you choose. It's going to drive your ability to relax, how you perform in the gym, how well you learn, and if you're having fun and all that good stuff. So that is it for episode number 93, talking about the fitness pizza pie. Start thinking of your fitness in these terms. As always, please leave a review if you haven't already done so on iTunes and share this with a friend. All you got to do is click the share button on iTunes and you can text it to somebody. And I appreciate all the the kind words of encouragement that people give me about the podcast. And I have some new things I'll be coming out with uh, that you'll be hearing about on the podcast. I'll be back next week with episode number 94. Until then, win the week. Peace. You've been listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you enjoyed the show, remember to subscribe, rate, and review us in iTunes.